Welcome to season 12. It's weird to think that we're approaching the end of these Red Dwarf videos, or at least a hiatus. But here we go. We actually opened with Kat doing something hilarious. One, two, three, four, five! Where are our cards? You ain't getting any! Without cards we can't win! Exactly! He really doesn't get poker. How many cards you want to change? None, are you crazy? Have you never heard of a poker face? Huh? If nothing else, the cat videos for these last two seasons are gonna be fun. How many cars do you wanna change? Five! The sight of Crichton looking on with his flowery pink apron and mixing bowl tickles me. Anyway, they're picking up a warning that a space station is nearby. So have an epic sequence where they start up Starbug for the first time this season. Silky is the first day we got it. So they're on their way to a research station. America attempted to bring peace to the world by asking every nation on Earth to sign a peace treaty. Any nation that refused, they invaded. Now a war ensued that was called the War Against War. Honestly, that sounds like something we would do. I mean, we love to declare war on things. The war on terror, the war on drugs. Why not just have a war on war and be done with it? Those countries who went to war to fight in a war against war called themselves United America. Anyway, Starbug could use some fixing. I'm sick of always having to turn left. I'm sure some fans think it's hacky, but I really dig this running gag about Starbug basically being a big car. It just gets a chuckle out of me every time they do it. So the purpose of this research station was to cure evil. Some people do terrible things, but not because they're evil. It's because they're mentally bonkers. This gets Crichton on the topic of psychopaths. Not all psychopaths kill, of course, sir. Eh, I think that would be a sociopath, but what do I know? But as a rule, they don't actually physically harm anyone. So what do they do then? Well, many go into banking. Many others are CEOs, businessmen, lawyers, even politicians. Anyway, they tested this cure on people who were considered to be evil, so some of them could be running around the station. I want all the bazookoids, safeties off, ready to fire. Well, all the bazookoids are back on Red Dwarf, sir. Have we got any guns with us? Just your staple gun, sir. Fill her up. They find cryo booths for Vlad the Impaler, Joseph Stalin, Messalina, and of course Adolf Hitler. You had to know one of them would be Hitler. All labeled cured. Rupert Murdoch, not responding to treatment. So how did they get the bodies of these ancient people? They tracked down their descendants with DNA regression technology, traveled back down the ancestral line via their mitochondrial DNA and recreated them. Okay, I've heard weirder explanations for things on this show. But Hitler didn't have any kids. I read this conspiracy book once and it proposed the theory that at the end of the Second World War, Hitler killed his wife and his body double to make it look as if he committed suicide. Oh, we're doing the whole historical figure may have actually had a double to die in his place theory again. There is a theory that Hitler might have had an illegitimate child, so they could have just mentioned that instead of bringing up a theory that's very similar to the Jesus and Judas one from Lemons. The story went that when he reached Argentina, he had kids there. We get an explanation of Messalina, since she's probably a lesser known figure from this group. The third wife of the Roman Emperor Claudius, possibly the most depraved, brutal, and murderous nymphomaniac in history. Well, according to that Caligula movie and its sequel, at least. Anyway, the theory goes that what causes people to be evil is a misfiring gene that turns off empathy, which can apparently be turned back on. Meanwhile, Rimmer finds another cryo booth. Professor Shaul Telford. Hey, this one's empty. Indeed it is. Your arrival here automatically triggered the cryo booths to release mode. Good entrance, love this creepy lighting. But yeah, actually all of the booths have been released. Come, join us for lunch. I'm with Lister, this is gonna be interesting. Now we get to meet all of them. Joseph Stalin, call me Joe. Adolf Hitler, please call me Dolphy. No mind of yours, that's the old me. Messalina, call me uh, anytime. Now, appetizers. Yeah, Hitler is definitely the highlight of this episode. <laughs> what a goofball. Vlad the Impaler was running late. Are you on your own or is there a Mrs. the Impaler? <laughs> I love that he thinks that was a joke and doesn't realize that Kat really is that dumb. Lister figures there must have been other scientists and asks what happened to them. Turns out that he and his patients were the only survivors after an attack. Why would they try to eliminate you? 
A cure for evil would mean an end to war. An end to war would mean no arms industry. There would be no one to exploit. That's a good point, actually. War is profitable. Society wouldn't work anymore. Also, Vlad is eating off a skewer. Nice detail there. So they marooned us here with no hope of getting back to Earth. But Hitler's not gonna have any more of this depressing talk. <laughs> to new friends. New friends! Selfie! I just noticed how he's holding the phone. <laughs> and there's my thumbnail. Come on, what other shot was I gonna use? The look on the dwarfers' faces, though, especially Crichton. Also, Vlad. The rest of them are just smiling pleasantly, but he's just like, hey. Later on, I mentioned Lister's jacket last season. We get a really great shot of it here. Hitler notices it too. But I just totally adore your jacket. Where did you buy it? I bought it in a second-hand shop on Mimas, and then I painted it myself. Confirmed that Lister was the one who painted it. It was just kind of implied before now. And your use of saturated color to celebrate the counterculture spirit of the peace is so chic and fun. I've got some stuff to say about Hitler that I'm gonna save until the recap. But for now, I'll just say that the way they depict him is interesting. He is also artistically inclined, but now he just plays guitar. That's how. I play guitar. You are shizing me! We should jam sometime. How about now? Look, I can't jam with you, okay? Oh, poor Dolphy. God damn it, why did they have to make Hitler so damn adorable? It's because I'm Hitler, isn't it? Great, now I want to hug Hitler. So I'm cute now. Really, I am. Thanks, Red Dwarf. I can't jam with you because I haven't got me guitar. I got a bunch of guitars in my quarters! Now he's doing devil horns. God damn it. Meanwhile, Messalina just tries to make friends with Cat, but not in the way that he thinks. Again, saving it for the cat video. For now, just take my word that it's adorable. I like to go wandering. Speaking of adorable, Lister and Hitler performing the Happy Wanderer, which is appropriate since it was originally in German. When did Lister get so good at playing the guitar, though? Maybe Hitler's playing is mostly drowning his out, and that's mostly what we're hearing. Either way, this scene is cute as hell. Look at him go. Lister, can I have a word? Rimmer doesn't approve. Before you know it, he'll have you in Lederhosen playing Tomorrow Belongs to Me. I mean, it's Hitler. I think there are worse things you could be worried about. Anyway, what they came to warn him about is that they're approaching a proto-planet that they're about to collide with, so they need to head out as soon as a sandstorm ends. And Rimmer, being Rimmer, suggests that they don't tell their hosts about it. So you're suggesting that we just walk away from here and leave them to die? No, I'm suggesting we leg it from here and leave them to die. But, uh, Lister and Cat have apparently been drugged, and Crichton and Rimmer have been hacked, and they both shut down. Sometime later, Rimmer wakes up in a box. A Hitler. How could anything be worse than this? Wow, way to go. Lister wakes up, about to be castrated by a machine. Damn. Cat's about to drown, but he's got real problems. Not my clothes! The dry clean only! And Crichton's head is on a, well, probably a mop, but it looks like a pike. Hello? How am I gonna mop up ever again? Lister escapes and finds Crichton's body, then his head. Oh, Poor Cat's really about to drown. And it turns out that Rimmer is in the garbage chute. That's the last time I ever trust a psychopath. Afterwards, they find the doctor is unconscious. We've been looking for you everywhere. It's pretty obvious who they suspect of doing all this. Whoever buried me alive left this behind. A Hitler. It's not possible. There's an Andy Hitler or an Ainsley Hitler. Okay, that was an interesting way to work in a reference to Ainsley Harriet. I'm sure he's thrilled about that. Now I'm reminded of what else AH stands for. <laughs> So Crichton has a psychopathy scanner and wants to use it on all of them. They agree on the condition that it gets used on the dwarfers as well. Everybody gets tested. It turns out there is one psychopath among them. They display greatly reduced empathy, no remorse, and a massive sense of self-worth. Which one of them is it? It's you, sir. Of course. I can't believe they haven't mentioned handsome! But it turns out that there's a second one. It's Professor Tell. Not only does he not need a wheelchair, it turns out that the formerly evil people were droids. 
Crichton asks who he really is, and here comes the villain speech. I brain-hacked entire populations and made them attack themselves before my arrest and execution. You were the patient. They were the scientists trying to cure you. Did it strike you as curious that Hitler didn't really look very much like Hitler? I love that they acknowledge that. It's hard to miss, but I figured the casting was just rule of funny. Speaking of, he intended to escape in Starbug while they were captured, but he couldn't get it to start. It must have some special ignition sequence. What is it? But he thinks he can get Cat to help him. My cat has no fidelity to anyone but himself. Oh, fuck you, dude. We're the posse. Boys from the dwarf. Yeah. Boys from the dwarf callback. And I'll give you anything that you want. Sounds good. You heard him. I have no fidelity. Well, in that case, sir, why be on his side? Be on ours. Okay. But yeah, Cat is ready to join whichever side is being the most generous. They're not going to be giving you anything because pretty soon they're going to be dead. No, wait. I'm with you. I get to do it. Can I trust you? I'm a psychopath, ain't I? You and me both. Okay, this might be the best ending ever. Now, uh, was that for a pokey face, huh? Pokey face. It's poker face. I only have to know how to do it, not say it. So ends Cured. I've gotten a lot of comments about how season 12 is the worst thing ever, but I liked this episode a lot at least. We'll see how the others hold up. For one thing, it's almost a cat episode in disguise. Hell, it's more of a cat episode than Can of Worms was, so I'm automatically gonna love it for that as long as he's well represented, which he was. Also, Hitler, that was a thing. It's kind of interesting that they have him being kind of gay-coded, meaning he acts flamboyant and sassy. Basically, he comes across as stereotypically gay. I wonder if that was inspired by a theory that the real Hitler was gay. Most historians think it's bullcrap, and it probably is, but that theory did gain a little traction for a while. There was even a recurring gay Hitler character on Saturday Night Live played by Chris Kattan during that time. So I kind of wonder if that theory inspired the way Hitler was portrayed here. By the way, it's unfortunate that this video is going up during Pride Month, but it wasn't intentional. So yeah, Hitler was adorable, so I guess I should be glad he turned out to not be Hitler. Even if that's a little too reminiscent of Lemons, which was definitely the better episode, but oh well. Either way, I got curious about the actor who played him, so I looked him up. He's mostly a Shakespearean theater actor and hasn't been in anything I've seen. But apparently he did play Ted Bundy in a miniseries once, so that's kind of funny. Especially since he doesn't look like him either. Either way, I loved him in this. He's got the biggest smile I've ever seen on anyone. So I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. It was really cute, and other than it being a little too similar to Lemons in a couple ways, I have no complaints. Next up is Siliconia. See you then. They found his head impaled on a stake. So somebody's head winds up impaled on a stake, so it's automatically got to be Vlad the Impaler? 